Kama Deva, or Kama, is known as the god of love in Hinduism. Often portrayed as a handsome man and wielding a bow and arrow. Sounds awfully familiar, right? Indeed, Kama shares the same image as his Greek counterpart, Eros, the god of love in the Greek pantheon, as well as sharing the powers of Cupid from Latin literature, in the sense that Kama's arrows, like Cupid's, can cause those who are struck to fall in love. Kama also has some unique features that separate him from his counterparts, however, including that his bow is made out of sugarcane, and that the string of his bow is made from honeybees. The arrows themselves are scented with five fragrances, including the asoka, lotus, blue lily, jasmine, and mango flowers, all of which work to incite and invigorate the target. The scents themselves, however, also maintain some significance, such as the asoka tree representing fertility, the lotus representing purity, the blue lily representing tranquility. The jasmine, meanwhile, is said to have the effect of an aphrodisiac, while the mango flowers represent prosperity and fulfillment. Kama's role within Hindu stories is quite minimal, but his impact is nonetheless quite essential. He's known to enter the mind and thus become an entity of distraction, earning him the name the one who distracts. Additionally, given the way that love can blindsight and furthermore leave someone wounded, he can be known as the one who wounds. He can also be known as the one who intoxicates, given how potent and overwhelming love can be. Kama is said to be a son of the preserver god Vishnu and the goddess of fortune Lakshmi. However, some also believe that Kama was a creation of Brahma, or that he was reincarnated as the son of the hero Krishna. In terms of his relationships, he appears to be in service to Indra, from whom he takes orders from without question such as when Indra asks him to shoot Shiva with one of his love arrows. While the tasks seem dangerous and appear to have no benefit for Karma, he does so anyway, under the request of Indra. Karma is closely associated with his consort Rati, the goddess of love. Though while Karma is usually associated with the infatuations of the mind, Rati is closer associated with arousal and sexual appetite. This is quite fitting given that Rati is described and often portrayed as a beautiful woman, that has no rival in the looks department. As well as his relationships with the other gods, Kama also maintains some companions, including a green parrot that often serves as his vehicle, and humming bees that serve as the string of his bow. The springtime breeze is also commonly associated with Kama. As the story goes, Shiva was in mourning for the death of his wife Sati, who had thrown herself into a fire to spite her father, who had not approved of her union with Shiva. Unable to cope with the grief, Shiva entered a meditation. But during this time, Sati was reborn as the goddess Parvati. Indra, the king of heavens, was made aware of Sati's reincarnation and knew it would be a shame if she was not reunited with her love Shiva. So he told Parvati's father that she would be destined to marry Shiva and that she should be taken to him. Agreeing to this, Parvati went to see Shiva and would become his servant during his meditation but Shiva was not interested. Despite her best efforts to please him, Shiva seemed only content in his meditation and nothing more. Saddened by this, Indra stepped in again, only this time he called upon Karma and Rati with the hopes that they could make Shiva fall in love with Parvati. Sneaking into Shiva's grounds, Karma was able to find the destructive god and took aim upon him with one of his love arrows. But a force overcame Karma and he was unable to loose the arrow. He heard Parvati approaching, and fearing being discovered, he scuttled up a tree and hid there only to watch Parvati preach her love to Shiva. Once more, Shiva rejected her and went back to his meditation as if she meant nothing to him. Kama felt Parvati's pain, and it was only then that he mustered up the conviction to take aim at Shiva again, and this time shoot the arrow. Immediately, the arrow took effect and Shiva opened his eyes in wonder at Parvati, as the arrow worked its magic. Karma believed that his work was done until Shiva began to come to his senses. He realised there was an arrow sticking out of him, and then spotted Karma sitting in the tree. So angered that someone had tried to take advantage of him, as well as disturb his meditation, Shiva opened his third eye, from which flames were produced, and he burned Karma to ash. With Karma dead, the world threatened to become a barren place because nothing new was produced out of love. Lands would become infertile 
no new babies were born, and those who were in love showed indifference to one another. Under these grounds, as well as being distraught at the loss of her husband, Rati begs Shiva to restore karma to life. As the tales go, Shiva would marry Parvati after eventually falling in love with her, and thus it's said that he brought karma back to life, either under his own volition or under the persuasions of Parvati. In some versions, Shiva only brought karma back to life as an image so that he represented the more emotional and mental state of love as opposed to the physical side. Additionally, the reincarnated form of karma is sometimes noted as being a formless entity that induces love within the mind. Other versions have him depicted as Krishna's son. While karma is not widely recognized as a worship deity, there do exist ambiguous rituals in which practitioners of the faith can perform with the intention of attracting new or lost lovers or to increase one's own attractiveness. Other rituals include the usage of art and music, which can be used to gain the attention of both karma and rati. These rituals can be used in a multitude of different ways, some accounts even suggesting that prostitutes use the name of karma and rati so as to boost their own appeal. Other rituals are used in terms of fertility by couples so as to ensure a successful conception. There even appears to be accounts of a festival in which men perform rituals with the intention of being reincarnated in more desirable bodies. Karma is also apparent in some Hindu weddings, most notably by the bride, who in some traditions receives the painting of Karma's green parrot upon her feet. As always guys, if you've enjoyed today's video, then don't forget to hit the subscribe button and don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. Until the next time guys.